What if you can make your app more performant and use less memory without having to change your code? Well, that's the promise of Vue Vapor Mode, the experimental compilation strategy being worked on by the Vue team. It's inspired by SolidJS and allows us to take our same components that we're used to writing, but when it runs, it doesn't use a virtual DOM, meaning we get all sorts of benefits. But how exactly does it work? What benefits will this give us? And what's the current state of development right now? To understand Vapor Mode, we should first understand how Vue currently works. Vue has what it calls a compiler-informed virtual DOM. Let's first talk about the virtual DOM part. Like React, Vue stores some sort of JavaScript representation of our UI tree. So for each component, Vue will take the template and compile it into the render function at build time. Then using whatever data, it'll create the virtual DOM tree, and that DOM tree is mounted using the actual DOM commands to create the elements on our page. Then whenever our reactive data changes, the render function will re-trigger, a new virtual DOM tree will get created, the old and the new trees will get diffed, and then any necessary changes will be patched with the actual DOM commands. But one cool thing that Vue does with its virtual DOM that tools like React don't, or at least don't do yet, is that since there's the step of compiling templates into the render function, there's some compiler time optimizations that Vue makes. One of these optimizations is static hoisting. So any static part of our template, like our div that always says hi, won't create a new virtual node on every re-render, but instead will be created once, and then Vue's runtime code won't have to diff it since it knows it never changes. And that's just one of the optimizations. I'll leave a link to the full doc below, but just know that this compile step allows Vue to do some stuff. But even with the compiler informed virtual DOM, there's still some VDOM overhead. It has to be stored in memory somewhere. Whenever our reactive data changes, the render function has to create all these V nodes, and then the whole tree has to be walked to find any differences. But what if, when reactive data changes, we know exactly what parts of the DOM are affected, and then we can laser into those spots and change them directly? We wouldn't need to run the entire render function when something changes. We wouldn't need to diff this entire DOM tree. And in fact, we wouldn't need this virtual DOM tree at all. So when our val changes, for example, we can go exactly inside of this span and run the DOM command to update the text. And bam, this is Vue Vapor Mode. And the reason this is possible is because of Vue's reactivity system. We can essentially have parts of our DOM subscribe to reactive state. So if that ref changes, only this piece will have to update. Vue Vapor Mode is still in development, but the repo is public, so you can check it out. And there's also a really cool playground that we can use to understand it a little better. So let's take a look at some common examples. Let's say we have a toggleable H1 that shows a message. That message is bound to an input. And then we have a counter example. Let's first take a look at the build code with vapor mode off. We can see our setup function that creates our refs, and then we can see the render function. So every time some of this data changes, this whole render function will run and use functions like create element block or create element v node to construct our virtual DOM tree. Now let's turn vapor mode on. We still have our same setup function, but instead of returning a render function, it has some self executing function. And here we have a bunch of n number, which I'm assuming are the different nodes that use these HTML strings and this template method to create real DOM nodes. For our v if, it's using something like a watcher on our show dot value for dynamic text it's using effect on the proper ref and then it has other helpers for directives and events and even looking at this code even if i don't know exactly what it does makes a lot of sense with views reactivity each part of our ui is precisely controlled by the exact refs that impact it so even though it's still in development and not ready to use yet, I think this is the future of Vue. And I really like how the Vue team learned from the Vue 2, Vue 3 transition, and the proposed integration of Vapor Mode sounds like it'll be a lot smoother and better accepted. It won't affect any existing apps and is gonna be completely opt-in. The plan is for this to happen at the component level using something.vapor.view, which means that we can freely mix Vapor components and the current style of components within the same app. But hypothetically, if your whole app was built with only Vapor components, the virtual DOM runtime will get removed from the bundle, which will reduce the amount of runtime code which your app needs to send to the browser. But I'm still curious what level of feature parity we'll see between Vapor and non-Vapor components. Vapor components will only support the composition API and script setup, but I'm curious what other limitations, if any, will exist. Either way, this is something that should be on your radar, and I highly recommend playing around with it in the repo link below. Let me know your thoughts on Vapor mode, and I'll see you in the next video.